Hello, my name is Janet Martin. My forensic psychology capstone presentation is a literature review of transgender student experiences in the United States school system. Youth who identify as transgender or gender nonconforming encounter a broad spectrum of educational and social barriers in elementary and secondary schools in the United States. Policies, laws, and misinformation continue to exacerbate problems for transgender people, and school age youth face some of the most difficult challenges because they lack opportunities for recourse and life experiences. Attempts to advocate and support transgender and gender nonconforming youth may be well intended, but quite a few of these efforts miss the mark because their design is based on misunderstanding, rigid policies, and a gender binary mindset. According to the Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Education Network, 58% of students who identified themselves as part of the LGBT community reported feeling unsafe while attending school. Also, 43% said they felt unsafe due to their gender expression. Lack of safety and support is a major problem among LGBT students in public schools. Statistics regarding school safety among LGBT students demonstrate transgender students are subjected to conditions that are much worse than their LGB counterparts. National Gay and Lesbian Task Force and the National Center for Transgender Equality revealed that 78% of harassment and 35% of physical assault instances reported by LGBT adolescents were borne by transgender students. Bullying is an ongoing issue in the United States public schools, especially in cases where bullying escalates into physical violence from the assailant or by the victim seeking retaliation. Terminal research on school bullying distinguishes this type of bullying as a systematic abuse of power expressed toward victims in the form of harassment, physical aggressive behaviors, intimidation, ridicule, and taunting. Another type of school bullying commonly used against LGBT students involves shaming and humiliation. The after effects of shame-oriented bullying often promulgates shame-oriented coping me methods. Findings in the literature on school bullying among LGBT students also indicates correlations exist between bully victimizations and other at-risk behaviors, including suicide. According to the findings, bullying is a consistent part of LGBT student lives and is not something that occurs on an isolated basis. Questions for discussion on the safety of transgender and non gender nonconforming students include how should school districts and schools address harassment, bullying, and abuse of transgender students? And should bullying based on gender identity be considered a hate crime? If yes, should the legal, legal parameters and punishment for hate crimes be applied? If no, why not? Transgender and gender nonconforming students are more than three times likely to be absent from school in months preceding a severe victimization event related to their gender expression. Studies, study findings show one out of every six trans and gender nonconforming students quit school to avoid having to experience unsafe and discriminatory school conditions. Some researchers contend restroom issues are critical to overcoming the academic challenges of transgender and gender nonconforming students because of their emotional, physical, and psychological pain levels associated with the being able to use rest, the restroom of their gender uh, identity. Directing transgender students to use staff or unisex restrooms instead of bathrooms appropriate to their proclaimed gender indirectly conveys to the school population that trans people are different are of a different class. In addition to difficulties with academic performance, transgender and gender nonconforming students who quit school after their during the quit school during their K through 12 education loses access to educational opportunities but they also forego health and nutritional resources. According to the National School Climate Survey, transgender and gender nonconforming students are less likely to graduate 
from high school. St studies prevent, present evidence that show transgender and gender nonconforming people have lower educational aspirations and attainment levels than their fellow student counterparts. Some student respondents express they choose to pursue a college education as a means of fighting back against harassment, whereas others said they returned to school later in life to find that younger people were far more tolerant and accepting towards transgender and gender nonconforming individuals. Questions for discussions regarding academic performance and educational aspirations could be, what are the legal requirements associated with allowing or not allowing transgender students to use bathrooms consistent with their gender identity in your state? Why can't schools just send transgender students to single stall or faculty restrooms? Are separate bathrooms, lockers, dormitories for transgender and gender nonconforming students equal based upon federal civil rights laws and protections? Should they be allowed to use the public facilities of their gender identity? K through 12 teachers are unlikely to address issues they cannot detect or do not understand, and studies regarding transgender and gender nonconforming students suggest their challenges often fall into one or both of these categories. A study involving 77 teacher education programs indicated that nearly half of them did not match or contain any content on how to acknowledge or address address students with unconventional sexual orientations. Another study found that even when teacher education programs include content in their curriculum that address sexual orientation and gender issues, school and district leaders sometimes recommend a hands-off avoidance oriented approach toward transgender students. Some teachers cite feeling fearful over saying or doing the wrong thing, considering the seemingly delicate nature of transgender and gender subject matter. Teachers may also refrain from acknowledging gender identity because they want to avoid saying or doing something that could prom promulgate legal issues. Questions for discussion on teacher education issues could be how can teachers support transgender and non or gender nonconforming students? Should school districts and the Department of Education provide and or require gender sensitivity and transgender training to teachers and school employees? Should educators serve as protective agents for transgender and gender nonconforming students? Federal laws have significant impact on transgender and gender nonconforming youth throughout schools in the United States. Three laws are specifically three laws that specifically affect transgender and gender nonconforming people in the United States school system include Equal Protection Clause of the Fourteenth Amendment, Titles uh, Twelve of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and Title Nine of the Education Amendments Act of 1972. Legal studies encompassing court cases involving transgender and gender nonconforming people reveal, reveal how the overruling discrimination allegations, namely on the basis of religious exemptions, leave transgender and gender nonconforming students vulnerable to discriminatory practices in education settings. The types of issues transgender individuals face in public schools drastically affect their emotional, mental, and social well-being and studies concerning the lives of these indiv individuals unanimously cite a need for legal changes that will protect them and overcome political obstacles in the way of current provisions. Discussion questions for legal issues affecting transgender students may include, why does the LGBT community need separate and specific discrimination laws outside the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Title 12, and Title 9? Do transgender students have the right to express their gender identity in school? How can we develop transgender inclusive policies and laws that can apply to transgender students? Introduced in early 2015, the Student Non-Discrimination Act, SNDA, was designed to fulfill gaps in left open by 
The Equal Protection Clause, Title 12 of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and Title 9 of the Education Amendment of 1972. If passed, SNGA would have, would have helped by safeguarding transgender and gender nonconforming people from retaliatory, discriminating, and harassing behaviors, although the bill ultimately did not receive enough votes from Congress. The effort to enact better legislation indicates there could be additional protection in the future concerning solutions to issues tr transgender and gender nonconforming students face, currently face. Recommendations throughout the literature repeatedly called for parents, teachers, school counselors, coaches, members of the community, and private organizations to collaborate and form activist groups that support and protect tra transgender and gender nonconforming students. Research on transgender and gender nonconforming people's rights as students displays how school decisions to support approaches that favor nonconformist perspectives on gender often lead to just as many problems for affected individuals despite their intentions to help and honor their rights and individuality. Thus, from a legal and ethical perspective, one very important takeaway from the literature review is that it is not always appropriate to vilify schools. Despite the currently concerning state of transgender and gender nonconforming students in K-12 schools, it stands to reason current studies, surveys, and reports about the lives of these individual experiences probably underreport the prevalence of the issues in, the, in U.S. public schools. According to Gehring and Vasky, the oppressive and hostile environment transgender and gender nonconforming people face in public schools is liable to inhibit the student's willingness to defend themselves or take action. This trait is common among people of marginalized populations. Where many of these individuals would prefer continue dealing with discrimination, harassment, and violence, rather than expose themselves publicly by seeking action through socially acceptable channels. Another significant discovery garnered from the literature review pertains to the compromised structure of transgender and gender nonconforming students' social networks. When students experience difficulty with their teachers, they frequently turn to their parents or friends for support. In other cases, when children and adolescents encounter difficult situations involving their peers and friends, they often consult with parents or teachers. School-aged children suffering from problems at home are often consoled by friends during times of need, or they have opportunities available through extracurricular activities where they can channel their emotions constructively or receive support from coaches and mentors. Based on patterns throughout the literature and the sections described, Transgender and gender nonconforming students often lack solid relationships and social connections, leaving them without a stable and supportive network. Individuals who have trouble conforming to a biological gender have few places to turn and are thus more apt to tolerate abuse, violence, and other unacceptable forms of treatment for the lack of more positive alternatives. This is a critical problem and highlights how important it is for school personnel to acquire knowledge on transgender and gender nonconforming students. Otherwise, these students are liable to remain hidden even when resources and school support is available. The prevalence of transgender and gender nonconforming people in schools and workplaces is becoming increase increasingly commonplace. Likewise, resources and support for these individuals are increasing. Although quite a few gaps remain concerning the linkage between transgender and gender nonconforming people, stakeholders, and support resources. The supply and availability of cases involving transgender and gender nonconforming elementary age children may garner additional support from for non cis gender students. Those who debate or oppose school policy changes may find the experiences and hardship of younger children more difficult to negate and deny. Regardless of whether transgender and gender non-conforming children should raise more or less empathy is certainly debatable. Nonetheless, in either case, their plight may be playing a key role in reducing some of the uncertainty surrounding legitimacy of these students' challenges in public school systems throughout the United States. 
Bullying and harassment issues surrounding transgender and gender nonconforming students in public schools are perhaps the most concerning problem demonstrated through the literature review. The prevalence of bullying and harassment victimization among transgender and gender nonconforming students remain alarmingly high. Cultivating a culture of tolerance and respect for diversity among all students is critical to the safeguarding of non cis gender students. However, before focusing on students, schools must train their teachers, coaches, healthcare employees, and support staff on the prevalence and persistence of bullying and harassment among transgender and gender nonconforming youth in schools. Until schools develop no tolerance policies and follow suit with the adoption of, of a of an organized culture, students will likely continue to target marginalized groups at schools with bullying and harassing and other forms of disparaging behaviors. Also evident of in evidence of inaction on schools' parts in response to bullying and harassment should be intoler intolerable. Since schools continue to own the decisions to in enact lo restroom, locker room, and other accessibility policies that affect transgender and gender nonconforming students, Evidence from the literature review indicates that the courts are beginning to accept the increasing amount of accountability from schools. Thus, it behoves school decision makers to take proactive steps to protect these students. Additional questions for discussion about transgender, gender nonconforming students' experience may include how do the experience of transgender and gender nonconforming students differ from their fellow classmates? What efforts can be taken to ensure that trans and gender nonconforming students have their same rights and protections as other students? And should transgender students be required to behave accordingly and display the gender that aligns with their biological sex in a school setting to assimilate with other students and not disrupt the learning environment while living as transgender outside of school? Why or why not?